Today we're going to talk about how to install the A4988 on the Big Tree Tech SKR version 2. We're also going to cover how to handle a Creality screen as someone wanted to know how to install this on the actual SKR version 2. So the first thing that I need to talk about is actually the stepper. Now we have several stepper slots where we can insert our stepper driver. We have our X stepper, our Y stepper, our Z stepper, our E0 stepper, and our E1. These are your first and second extruders. Now there's a set of pins that we have to set for jumpers. So we're gonna have to look that up in the manual and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Then I also want to explain that we have EXP1 and 2 for the actual display. And on the back of the display, we actually have several. We have E1, 2, and 3. So I'll show you how to deal with that in just a second. So what we're going to do first is actually zoom in on the actual stepper so you can see what's going on for the A4988. So here's the actual stepper, and underneath here, being the cooling fins, there's actually a chip that says A4988. That's the stepper chip. But what we're interested in is how to install it. So what we need to know is where the enable pin is so we can line it up on our board. And as you can see, the enable pin is right underneath here for the solder joint, and the pin would be down below. So on the board, we're going to have to connect that to the same spot for the actual stepper connector. So I'm going to go over to the browser for a second and see if we can see what's going on with this. So in the web browser, let me just bring it up here real quick for you. You can see that on Marlin's website for GitHub, they actually have a bunch of boards listed. Now ours isn't, so we have to go over to repositories. And then on repositories, type SKR2. This will bring us to our actual board type. And inside here, we have hardware, firmware, and then 3D. So I'm guessing most of what we're looking for is probably going to be in the pinouts. But this is also the manual. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the pinout diagram so I can show you something. So here we have the actual pinout diagram, what tells us which pins are which for a bunch of different functionality around the board. But in the case that I want to show you, enable is actually this pin right here. It's also this one, this one, this one, and this one. So now you know where the enable pin is. I would normally show you on the bottom side of the board, but I don't want to rotate it during the tutorial. So let's go over to the manual for a second and see if we can find the reference inside the manual to where they do step dirt. And when they say step dir, they mean step direction. It's just dir is short for direction. So we're getting pretty close to where it is. It says step dir mode right here. And then it shows the jumpers being right here. So our jumpers currently are shifted over to the left. So we're going to have to move them to the right. So I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Let me just uh, bring this up so you can see. Okay, so over here, we're going to have to pop out these actual jumpers for a second. So the actual default configuration this board comes in for jumpers is actually the spy mode. So now that those are out, we've got to jump MS1, which is the top set of pins. Then we're going to do MS2. And then we're going to do MS3. Now these give you the highest degree of step for this stepper driver, which is 1 16th of a step. And then you have to jump the actual sleep pin now. So they're all in a row. So we know where the actual enable pin is located on here, which is here. And then we know it's in the corner. So all we have to do is align this and then apply a little bit of thumb pressure to put it in place. 
So now that that's in place, we want to set up the actual board so we can use it. So I'm going to put the actual cabling for the NEMA 17 up here so that we can run this axis. The other thing that we want to do is actually set this up. So this is really quite simple. For the actual connections, what you're going to do is EXP, you're going to take your notch connector and you're going to connect it right here. The other side of your cable is going to go to EXP1 on your board. So you just connect it right there. So let me rotate this over and place this down so you can see it. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to set up the actual firmware. So before I do that, I'm going to show you how to connect the actual power cables. This currently is disconnected from the wall, so there's no energized power in these cables. So I'm going to loosen the two ports over here. This is for board logic power. So it's red and black. Red is voltage, black is ground. I'm using currently a 12 volt power supply, but it may vary in your system. So I've placed ferrule connectors on here for safety. This keeps the frayed wires from touching either the positive to negative or the negative to positive because it keeps them in line and you just crimp them in. So that's a great safety feature that you want to use if possible because it'll make your printer a lot more safe and spare you having to replace equipment if something goes wrong. So let me slide this one in here for the ground logic. Now the other trick that I like to do is I mark the actual tops of the bolts for voltage and ground so I know what I'm connecting to. That way I don't connect something accidentally backwards that might matter and cause damage. So now that we have that set up, we gotta actually load the firmware. So unfortunately you have to pop out your SD drive and then you're gonna put it inside your SD reader and then plug this into your computer. Now you might hear a sound when I plug it in, but the next step is to actually go over to VS Code to set this up. So inside VS Code, what we're gonna have to do is click on the Explorer button. So I'm gonna change the view so it's slightly better for you to see. So I'm gonna click here. It's then gonna say Open Folder. Then I'm gonna go to my Downloads folder where I've downloaded Marlin and extracted it. So I'm going to click on the first Marlin folder, the second Marlin folder, then select folder. Now I'll put it back on the other display so you can see it better. So essentially what's going to happen is a bunch of things are actually going to load inside here. So we want to set up our configuration and normally it'll come up with .pio over here for your platform io.ini and our default environment will need to change in a moment. But normally what I'd like to do is show you how you figure it out. So let's go over to the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. Inside here we're going to search on skr underscore 2. Now that didn't work so we're going to do v2. And as you can see I'm actually using the rev b board for this. The rev a is not a board you want to use but there is a actual MOSFET fix that they've implemented. So the likelihood of you having a board is not that likely. And if so, you can contact Big Tree Tech and they'll walk you through possible ways you can take care of the issue. But I'll leave a link in the description of this video so that you can find that. So I'm gonna copy this. Then I'm going to go over to my configuration.h, but before I do that, I would just want to show you something over here where it says STM32F407VGT6. That's going to correspond to an INI file inside the INI folder. I'll show you that in a moment. So let's go over to configuration.h. We're going to search on motherboard. 
Then we're going to paste what we just copied for our configuration. Then we're going to go up here and change our serial port to negative 1. After we've changed that, we need to search on our steppers. So we're going to say A4988 for our stepper so we can see it. It's currently by default already enabled. So we don't need to change much like other tutorials for steppers that I show you. So we're all set there. Then down here, normally they have their defaults already set. But you can go over to RepRap Calculator and calculate what yours may be. I'll uh, leave a link in the description for your convenience. But essentially, the first two right here being X and Y are normally belt driven systems. The next one after that is your Z-axis, which is usually a lead screw of some type. It could also be a belt, but in this case, it's a lead screw. And then the final one is your extruder. And in this case, we're just going to leave it alone for the tutorial. But there are tuning videos that I've made in the past. I'll probably make a new one in the future to show you guys how to do this. But for now, we're going to leave that alone. So the next thing I want to do is show you how to configure the CR10, the stock display for the Creality. So you're going to do a control F and just search on CR10 underscore stock. And let's see if it actually finds it. So it looks like it did. So all you have to do is hit the control button and slash to remove the comment. Now that that's all set, what we want to do is actually set this up to compile so or build as some people like to say but it's the platform io.ini that we need to modify for our default environment and like i was saying before you go to the ini folder then you find the chipset that you're working with being stm32f4.ini and you're going to search on skr underscore and it's probably going to be 2 in this case, which it is. So we're going to copy that. Then we'll go back over to our platform io.ini and we'll paste that over the mega. That sets up our environment. Now, one thing I need to point out is that when you normally download this and extract it, it's going to have a default build in there that they leave to check to make sure that it's okay before they actually post it. In this case, it's the Mega 2560. So we're just going to do a clean with the little garbage can down here. And that'll clean out all the information from the previous build. So now there's nothing in there. So now we can click on the checkbox down here and do our build. Now, in some cases, you may see an error if you're following these directions exactly. That may mean that either one of two things has occurred. Being the firmware version is changed from 2.0.9.1 to something else that's newer and there might be a bug or something's building out of order and you just hit the checkbox again and if it completes without error the second time you're all good. If there's a third time that you are preparing to do and it does fail, that probably means there's something wrong in what you typed in. So go to the very first red thing that appears in the list down below here. And that's probably where there's an error and correct it. The other errors that happen thereafter are usually a cascade of errors that occur. But seeing how this looks pretty good and it's about to complete, we're going to go over the .pio folder for build for the SKR version 2. And we're going to right click on reveal in file explorer. Okay, as you can see, we have firmware.bin right here. So we're going to send it over to our SD card. But as you can see right here, it says firmware.cur. That means current. In this case, what had happened is the previous file was called firmware.bin in lowercase. And after it loaded, it was changed to firmware.cur so that every time you power on, it does not reload. Thus, the firmware file 
is actually not a cursor file, it's just renamed cur. So, what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to send this file over to that drive. We'll verify it. And then what we'll do is we'll go over to the desktop and load it. So on the desktop, I'm just going to remove the actual drive and insert the SD card right here. And then I'm going to power it up. So I've just plugged in the actual USB cord, which is on direct power right now. But if you wanted to load your firmware, you can always move it over to the other two pins and plug it in. This will load it and this should become active in just a moment. So as you can see, it does say Marlin on the actual LED. It's kind of hard to read because it's got a glare. But uh, let me uh, power this down for a second. Turn this over to here. And I know you're not going to be able to see the panel super well because of the actual display is kind of bright. But I'll try and turn it so you can see it when I adjust. So I'm going to push down to go to the menu. I'm going to go to motion. Then I'm going to go to move axis. And I'm going to go to X. Then I'm going to say move 10 millimeters. And I'm just going to move it. Now I'm going to move it back. And so as you can see, the display for the Creality does work. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you for your time.